a very serious question, so I would like a very serious answer. Do you feel, as commissioners, that you are above the law? This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by... Freaking.com If you have to be outside New Hampshire, this kind of thing is also pretty useful. The Ron Paul candidacy did happen everywhere, really in the world, in a sense. One person could make a difference. This cameraman technically was a Romney supporter, but he documented the electoral abuses with his camera. I know I focus a little too much on video and how good or bad it is. There were many other things done behind the scenes in this campaign where one person made a difference and uh, you and I never heard about it. But ultimately all these folks, including me, were trying to move a mountain with a lever. Levers actually are useful for moving boulders off the top of the mountain to make it a little shorter and start an avalanche. That's why I have to give an honorable mention to the folks who at least move somewhere for more freedom. Like Wyoming or Ireland. There at least you get a little bit more freedom and you can start trying to move that boulder probably more or less by yourself and unnoticed. At least you're not moving a mountain. I assume you're not doing completely inefficient stuff as mentioned before while you're there. Now, Here's where activism starts to get a little more efficient, even if you're getting most of it wrong. Location, location, location. These end justifies the means occupy folks aren't even particularly pro-freedom, but choosing Keene as a place to take activism at least guarantees they'll get attention from the growing New Hampshire Liberty Press. Which in turn does breed, ten, you know, tends to bring more activists to New, New Hampshire who support the human rights of these occupiers. Here's some weak New Hampshire activism that at least is in New Hampshire. I was so eager to get into the fight that not long after unloading, I headed straight for the nearest intersection that had an IRS office in the general area. This didn't get much done, but at least it hit on the efficiency cylinder. Didn't take much effort or time or people. Actually, I should probably stop here and come to grips with the fact that I've probably skipped over some good examples of bad activism and some good types of bad activism, some, some types of bad activism that are worth mentioning. And maybe I should think a little bit more about all the cylinders upon which activism needs to hit, ideally ought to hit. So there are three cylinders I didn't think of initially when I was naming all the possible cylinders that the ideal activism would hit on. Those would be uh, that the activism unites activists, it displays courage, it strikes the root of a problem. Courage, of course, is less and less important the more successful you are. We don't need near as much of it to do stuff in New Hampshire that would require superhuman courage if you did it in North Korea. It also requires more courage to do something in Keene, I think, than it does to do it in Manchester. And I guess a fourth one would be it displays good timing. I kind of suck at that one. But, well, now that we're up to probably about 14 cylinders, I guess I will try to list them all in writing in the video description. It's a very serious question, so I would like a very serious answer. Do you feel, as commissioners, that you are above the law? Uh, here's an example of what I'd call mixed activism. Uh, the guys at governmentoversight.com. They, they've got the most important thing right. They're in New Hampshire. They're getting a lot of video, putting it up on YouTube. They seem to be focusing pretty much like a laser on the, the uh, I guess it's the lakes region. Or at least the guy who shoots most of these videos does. I keep an eye on what they've uploaded, sort of, but I don't really watch their videos much or comment on their channel much. I did post one comment and it said this. 
are you ever going to aim that camera at anything interesting? All right, 10 seconds. Oh, yes. Actually, they are. Here they are, aiming something, aiming the camera at something interesting. For two minutes, the same shot. No other shots. Now, this is kind of normal behavior that a person would be expected to engage in if they just own a cell phone or something. But I've seen their rig. It's probably worth almost as much as a house. If you're going to get a really good video camera, I'm not even going to say you have to shoot good video, but at least shoot interesting video. They're mostly failing to hit on the gets attention cylinder. I'm glad someone is recording these government meetings. What we're doing is we're collaborating, sharing information, sharing data. If, if, if that, I mean, uh, it's a public meeting. It's, it's a not, public it's meeting. Not, it's not a public meeting. I root for these guys when they come under attack, and uh, when they do, the video does get interesting. You don't have that. that you, don't, you can't say. Is this, is this your meeting? meeting? You're getting it's paid by the public. It's an open house. Uh, another cylinder that they hit on is the uh, sustainability cylinder because they've been doing this a long time. I don't know how they do it because their efficiency cylinder is completely misfiring. Well, almost completely. I liked Sam Dodson's approach a little bit better. Dodson made the same mistake of buying much more expensive equipment than uh, could ever be considered efficient for a, a relatively amateur videographer. Everything's big in Texas, and true to form, Sam had a way of kind of overdoing everything. He never got very good at handling the camera, but at least he filmed things that were interesting. So unlike the government oversight folks, Sam sometimes went viral. He spent way too much time over-editing his stuff. He was courageous, way more than me in terms of standing up to the authorities anywhere. But it only took him about two years to burn out, and he left New Hampshire. Spouting nonsense, or maybe good sense, about extraterrestrials. Oh, I guess that should bring me to another cylinder he was misfiring on. There is no patient identity at risk here, sir. I'm filming an EMT, and you will not tell me to turn the camera off. He wasn't very good at making us look good. He was always getting angry, overstating his powers, but the beauty of being in New Hampshire is the more of a train wreck you seem like, the more attention you get. And attention breeds movers, even if it's mostly negative. Egypt people is very nice, and if the Egypt people take my advice, they will strike down the one party state they fear. But that had better not happen here, cause we know that everything would fall apart if the city of Keene, New Hampshire starts to listen to the malcontents at Free Keene and sort of kind of cut spending, cause the government needs some expensive things like the wasteful 34 West building and the boondoggle jail where we put hat wearers and other people who could be considered swearers freaking.com